Today's Mass, by the way, is the, uh, from Our Lady on Saturday, the fifth, uh, the fifth version for that Mass. Some of the saints say that, well, two particular saints, I believe it was St. Bernard and St. Bonaventure, said that Our Lady is no less grateful than people of the world are. That is, people that are truly have man, good manners and were raised uh, properly and everything, that Our Lady is no less grateful than them, and that she will, in fact, return all of your greetings to her with graces for you. And that's a beautiful thought to remember. Every time we address her with the Hail Mary, she then, out of gratitude, you might say, gives us grace. And it's a, a beautiful thought. Suarez, he was a Jesuit theologian. He said, with all of his learning and all of his writings, he said that he would exchange everything that he wrote, all of his learning, for the merit of just one single Hail Mary. Well said. And then St. Gertrude, she once had a, a vision. Our Lord was counting gold coins. And St. Gertrude looked over to him in this vision and asked, My Lord, what are you doing? And he said, Well, Saint, he said, Gertrude, I'm counting all of the Hail Marys that you have just said, because each Hail Mary is a gold coin by which you can purchase heaven. And another one, another story along these lines is that a certain religious who had been most devoted to the rosary all her life long, she died, but one day she came back and appeared to one of her other, uh, the sisters of the convent. And she said that she would, she would go through all of her sufferings of her last illness. She had quite a significant amount of suffering in her last illness. She said, I would gladly endure them all over again if I could come back to earth just for the amount of time to say one Hail Mary, even if it is said quickly and with little fervor because it would increase her glory in heaven. And um, we have so many, so many stories like this. But remember that whenever we say the Hail Mary, and we'll say many of them after Mass today in the October devotions, but we are calling down Our Lady's blessing upon us. There's a yet one last story I wish to tell you. When St. Dominic was first starting to preach about the rosary, he would, from time to time, meet some opposition. It was, a, it was a new devotion. And some people did not exactly go for it. They were used to doing things their way. There was this one very pious woman, actually, who had gone to confession to St. Dominic. And St. Dominic had told her to say a rosary, and then to say the, to, he encouraged her to say the rosary every day, for the rest of her life. And she said, oh, no, no. I have these penances that I do and these good works and these other prayers. The rosary is something totally new. And she just couldn't understand it. So she, she said no. And she then left. Well, that night she fell asleep and was given a vision in her dream. St. Michael appeared with that famous balance of the good versus bad works. And all of the bad works were in one. And then all of her other good works, which were quite good, actually, and her penances and everything, they were all put in a scale, and the bad works far outweighed her good works. Then I can't remember if it was Our Lady or it was St. Michael took that one rosary that she said, as a penance, she did the one, and put it on the scale. And it tipped the whole thing to make her good works finally outweigh all of the bad. That's how powerful Our Lady's Rosary is. And we should never, never put it aside for any other, any other little devotion that we may have. The Rosary 
should be at the tops, right after the Mass. It should be the Holy Rosary, because so many graces are won and so many souls are saved through those 50 beads. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.